Benny. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. No one is to stone anyone until I blow this whistle. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Have a have a. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Zedos Game Podcast. My name is Joseph Buchanan, and joining me is Mr. Ken. Uh, uh, what do you say? Creative Control Ken. That's why I always call you. Creative Control Ken. How are you doing? Greetings. Uh, uh, also, we have is Greg Marshall joining us. How are you, Ken? Uh, Greg? Yeah, good. Very good. Uh, uh, how's the first week of 2021? Um, I don't know. It's just blurring into 2020 so far at the moment. It's uh, <laughs> as to be expected. Yeah, it's kind of the same, same, uh, same song, different producer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, Sash, Mr. Satch Landalari, how you doing? Hey, I'm all good. I'm all good. Happy New Year, people. I um, hope everyone had a good Christmas and New Year's and and whatever else they celebrate around this time. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, still alive, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, morbid start to the new year. Um, okay, we'll get straight into it. Um, Set, take it away. Okay, so first trailer we got is The Ride, starring Ludacris, directed by Alex Renard. Renar- oh, God, I keep doing this, man. You know, sure. <laughs> Alex Renavio. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you guys think of the trailer? Personally, for me, I thought I thought it was really, I thought it was quite quite good i'd watch this you know has that kind of sunday movie kind of feels but at the same time um a dramatic performance by Ludacris. i never thought he had it in him to be quite honest because obviously when i think of him i think of the little guy that gets taken a piss out of by tyrese in the fast movies fast and furious movies and stuff and he's always kind of been typecast for a really really long time whenever he's in acting roles and he's never really been in anything that I've seen where he's given any kind of gravitas and stuff. I was very surprised by this trailer. I was like, shit, that's ludicrous. And like, I was really pleased. Uh, the movie's already out on Amazon Prime. Um, it was a festival film that got picked up by them. It's been out for about two months, but we haven't covered it. But I came across this and figured may as well give it the views because, you know, um, probably it's in the ether there somewhere. But um, I was really shocked. I was really shocked by one, his performance, and two, um, two, yeah, I, I think I'd watch this, to be honest. What's your thoughts, guys? To me, it, it just comes across as sort of diet American history X. It just seems like the slightly less dramatic version of that. But I mean, that said, it looks it looks good. Um, as you said, I don't didn't think the words of dramatic performance by Ludacris would ever be uttered in this. <laughs> that is already the bizarrest thing of 2021. So, um, but yeah, oh, it's worth. It looks like it's worth giving a look and stuff like that. It, it has. It seems like it's got some of that sort of the blind side sort of like sort of sentimentality, and while taking on some of the themes of American history X and racism and this and that, but. I mean, the only thing is, is trailers, as they often do, have kind of always spoiled it. There was, there's no, you know, even halfway through the trailer, him and his new daddy are best friends and ready. So <laughs> you know what's going to happen. There's no real sort of... No drama. Uh, no drama, yeah. So, yeah, they're literally castrated, sort of ludicrous chance of being dramatic by showing everything in the trailer and, and that, that it all resolves itself. So, But that said, I'll, if it's on Amazon Prime, I'll give it a watch at some point when there's less important things to watch which sounds a bit harsh but no 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 that's there's going to be plenty of things plenty of time to watch movies over the coming weeks so yeah i'll give it a watch sometime soon so okay yeah so it's the inspiring story of a bmx champion who overcame an abusive childhood um you know uh, after you know learning life lessons from his like foster parents so that's your premise um i don't know if it's based on a true story or not but um you know those are vibes um it it was okay um nothing really jumped out i think i think shane graham the guy who plays a kid just is seems way too old 
to be someone who should be adopted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I did get that vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, so I looked up his age and he's 20 years old. So obviously when they filmed this, he probably was about 17 or 18, but he looks like 25. Yeah. He's, got a, he's got a much older face and look about it. So I'm just like, you know, these two parents think, oh yeah, we'll take him home. Like, are you serious? It's like, <laughs> it, 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 man's well past PB. So I don't know how old he's supposed to be playing in the movie, you know? So I'd imagine it's going to be like between 12 and 15 um, to warrant that kind of, um, a need for adoption and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it, it looks okay. Um, there's like you said, there's not many reviews about it. Um, I think it, it would just tick certain bo- boxes, but yeah, what I think the interesting part for this, well, yeah, to see Ludacris's performance and, uh, you know, but what I find, what probably doesn't bode well is the fact that it was released or was, produced and you know first trailers dropped in 2018 it's only just been picked up now so it can't scream quality and maybe the the performance by ludicrous isn't as what they maybe hoped it was um so but yeah it's one of those that i might get around to watching it but it's not on my watch list uh, you know yeah. um it to me um this is it's if it, it feels very mediocre um as soon as I started watching the trailer, I was bored. <laughs> not not to not to um, take away anything from his performance, if there is a performance in it. But I've seen it before, and um, ju- and just what Greg said, it it took all the drama out of it because these guys these guys know each other. Okay, um, uh, I don't really have much more to say about it. Really, it's um, it's. It's something, again, something to watch. Because we're on lockdown, it'll be something to watch. It's not something that'll be on... It'll be way, way, way at the bottom of the bargain bin for me. But um, uh, also because I watched... There was a trailer I watched after that called uh, Minari. It's uh, with Stephen Yen, the guy from The Walking Dead. The, the spoiler, the one that was killed. And um, that that trailer was infinitely better than what I saw was ludicrous and so it it's like putting a piece of shit on one side and a piece of gold on the other and like, <laughs> what, what do I want to eat how are you really Phil Joe <laughs> I don't know what you're making <laughs> shit gold <laughs> um, well that's how I felt um it's it's it, it, the ride feels very um early 2001 like it, it 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 just it smells. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I've I've kind of <laughs> garbage this film too much. Um, that's my true feelings about the ride. I will watch it, but if I've watched everything, if I've watched everything on the internet, that's when I'll watch it. I don't think they're going to be coming to Zito's game for the Paul quotes, are they? Really? <laughs> <laughs> be amazing quote. Uh, uh, gold and shit. <laughs> Which one? When I've watched every other film in existence, I might consider watching this flaming turd of a movie. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm just basing. It, the movie could be half decent, but I doubt it. And uh, you know, I need to shut up. Satch, what's next? <laughs> Satch. Okay, the next up we have the Mauritanian starring. Uh, what's his face? Benedict Cumberbatch. There we go. It's a movie by Kevin McDonald. Um, who else has it got in it? Is it Jodie Foster? Yeah, jo- yeah. Jodie Foster and Sh- Shannon Shana Woodley. Woodley. Yeah, and Zachary Levy. What film yeah. is that? Um, the the Manitonian. dude. Did you delete that? That you know what? Mandalorian. What? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, you know what. I saw it, I knew I couldn't pronounce it, but luckily when I saw the trailer, it had it had it had the, the movie trailer's voice right at the end that told you how to pronounce it. So that bit when you were like, Sash, what's next? What's next? I was listening out to it oh, to pronounce wait. it correctly. I didn't think I'd have it come back to me again to fuck it up. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's a poor title, I have to give it that, because that's not 
you know, you don't make it so complicated that you have to provide the voiceover at the end of a trailer to clarify how to say the Could movie. You, you know? Now, Ken, you've worked a cinema box office before for quite, and you've done a few years <laughs> of doing that. Could you imagine people coming up to box office trying to ask for tickets for this movie? Oh, uh, it'd, be, it'd, it'd be as good as uh, Crouching Tiger. We got some gems from that one. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. That was amazing. It's like got Dragon to- Ninja. Dragon Tiger. Tiger, yeah. like lion thing, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. just like yeah. Yeah. that dragon ninja tiger film. What is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That was brilliant. Uh, but yeah, that that'd be a mess. This is why everything's going self serve as well. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, it's it, it's got a really good cast. Um, I have to give it that. Um, it is going to be one of these dramatic movies. It's um, it sends around, you know, sort of like 9-11 and somebody who was involved in that and a defence team versus, you know, the ones that are trying to put him away. He's been on Guantanamo for like six years without a trial, not been charged for anything. So he's trying to, you know, show a story from two different sides. Um, I think that's quite interesting. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, trying to stretch his, uh, you know, accent muscles again, um, going with that kind of Southern drawl. Some scenes it kind of works, others you're like, mm, not too sure. But, you know, give him credit, he always goes for it. Um, Jodie Foster, bless her, she's looking old. Um, she's looking really old in this. It's, it's a little bit hard to watch sometimes. Like, oh, man. But it's just because you don't see her in too much. So you just go for so long without seeing her. And then suddenly it's like, oh, there you are. Um, but yeah, really good cast. Uh, Shailene Woodley, you know, she's a great actress. Um, I think she was in Big Little Liars, I think, the TV series. Yeah, yeah. The, the one yeah she's just fantastic in that. Really, really good. So Wasn't she, wasn't she the one that was Mary Jane in the Garfield movies? No. Andrew Garfield, they cut her. Oh, they cut out. her scenes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she was yeah. the lead of um, what's that series of films? Divergence. Uh, Divergence. Divergence. There we go. Yeah. It was the one that never got finished. They made three of the four films and then just stopped. It stopped after the fin- before the finale. That was it. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no, this one I actually thought was quite good. You know, kind of I kind of like those movies, like political kind of dramas, like courtroom drama kind of thing. So. Uh, so, so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this one, actually. Um, I, Greg, go on. No, no, go, go for it. Um, yeah, I actually saw this trailer before you put it on a few weeks ago, and um, I remember thinking, that's an interesting spin on seeing someone being incarcerated, why, the reason why they're being incarcerated and the reason why they're trying to cover it up and uh, being just having a lawyer trying to defend one of these people Mm-hmm. Ooh, the the out the outcry from your family, your friends, and everyone else. That's that's got to be a. I couldn't imagine being a defense attorney, uh, and going back to your family is that you're defending who now? Um, yeah, that, that was one of the reasons I I because re- you know I took law A level and I really was interested in law and really considered it. Um, and but the thought of being like a prosecutor had to defend someone who's guilty. I was just like, I can't do it. I haven't got those morals. Um, you know. I didn't think at the time there's plenty of other avenues of law which could have paid me loads of money, but um, I was like, no, no, it's the shit I see on TV. Um, copyright law would have you be yeah, copyright tax law is just so right you know, yeah, contract law we could have been making loads of monies, but yeah. Never um, too late, Ken. This podcast is sponsored by Skillshare, where you can. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> My first falls on the whole trailer is is it? It's clearly sort of vying for the Oscar. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Scenery yeah. really is, you know, sort Oscar of. Bait. Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, from the Foghorn Leghorn sort of uh, school of voice acting, is is doing his best to. But yeah, I mean, oh, Leghorn. <laughs> it just it it kind of. I mean, I, I'll never miss an opportunity to say that obviously I, I hold as screenwriters Aaron Sorkin above all others, and it just reminds me the fact that it's a court drama. It just makes me think of stuff like. A few good men or trial of the chicago seven or things like that so it makes me go well if they do this well it could be good um and you know it has potential to be this generation's to kill a mockingbird in the sense of it's very oh, yeah. um actually but unfortunately in a world so devices that we are with donald trump barely well still got one toe inside the white house at the he's moment hanging on in there. and the trumpians in there i'm sure that's i'm sure there's a better collective name for them i I'd use some words, but we'll probably get your podcast banned. But in the, in the uh, Trumpians, the YouTube's a minefield anyway. Well, there you go. So fucking these days. So I just think it's going to create a very interesting debate. I think there's more 
important things about this movie than the movie, which is it, it, it it's it's going to divide the left and the right wing. It's going to divide the Trumpians and the more human people and things like this. And I just think it's going to create a lot of discussion. I think there's going to be a lot of outcry when it comes out, people going, oh, what sort of bullshit is this about defending a terrorist and rah, rah, rah. And then others are going, well, Guantanamo Bay is a trustee and is a human rights, you know, sort of like thing. And Amnesty International will probably cash in. And yeah, I think, watch this space. I think this is going to create a lot of debate and it's going to divide a lot of people. But it could be this this you know this generation's to kill a mockingbird in the sense that go back you know a few years and the idea of a black person and being on the stand and all that so who knows but but yeah we shall uh, we shall yeah. watch and it's interesting to see kevin mcdonald's come back as well because you know uh, you know he had to, he was you know quite high profile at one point you know he did like last mm-hmm. king of scotland um and then state of play and then he just really hasn't done anything since like i don't know 2013 14 Something yeah, like that. Of, so it's, State of Play was around that time, wasn't it? Uh, like, State of Play, two thousand nine. Jeez. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, but then, and he's done the Eagle in two thousand eleven, um, and there's a couple of other movies up to. But then he's just done a few documentaries and TV stuff. So um, uh, it's interesting to see him back in like the feature film chair. So um, yeah, and obviously he's taken on a big project. So yeah. maybe it's a passion project for him. You know. So. I mean, to get Jodie Foster um, and Colin get Jodie Foster signed on to anything, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. quite a get. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna if depending on what the world, the condition the world is in when this comes out, it's it's definitely gonna cause ripples. Yeah, I mean, could Jodie Foster be coming back for that another Oscar? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was just saying, she's clearly feeling there's a symmetry problem and she needs a second one or something. So. <laughs> yeah, she did uh, Hotel Artemis in 2018, and before that, it was Elysium. In 2013, so she's really picky about mm, what yeah. she does. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, Jesus Christ. Isn't she? Isn't she sort of? Um, isn't she more into directing now, though? Isn't she? Yeah, she's, she's more of a, a director producer, these, producer, director. Yeah, producer director these days. So yeah, she did. A, she did an episode of Black Mirror. Oh yeah, 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 she did as well, <laughs> and uh, a couple of episodes of Orange Is the New Black as well. Damn. Uh, one of one of House of Cards. So yeah, she's been behind the camera a fair bit. Nice. Go, you go, Jody. Um, Satch, what's next? Okay, so next up we have Redemption Day by di- first time director Hijam Hajim Hajim. I had it earlier. Hajim Haji. And basically, um, yeah, he's a movie producer. He's produced a whole load of like movies and TV shows. This is his first foray into directing. It shows. It shows. And, and they've got um, actor Gary Dor. What's that? Dorden? Yeah, yeah, he's from the TV show um, First Wives Club, um, which is a remake of the movie, the old movie. Um, Andy Garcia is in there, and it was it was strange seeing Ernie Hudson there. So I was like, oh, that's Ernie Hudson in the trailer, trailer. And um, yeah, it was kind of average action kind of average. flair, but I think. Nah, for me, it's below average. Now the fact below that you said it's first time, first time director, yeah. that makes sense. Um, Andy Garcia did a day job. Day rate, he's yeah. <laughs> like 10, 15 minutes max. Um, yeah, this didn't appeal to me at all. It looked, it looked quite poor, um, in my opinion. So I've got no interest in watching this at all. I agree 100%. If there's some gold and a turd, I don't know what's <laughs> left <laughs> turd, but it's this. It, is, it just looks... The golden trunk. shit. It's, it's got that guy's like... Wasn't he in one of the million CSIs or something? And is he a star? <laughs> yes, he he was, yeah. seen for fucking anything and has never been famous nope. part of that. And now he's the main star. And then briefly you get Andy Garcia and it reminds you of better actors and better films that you could watch. And then that's it. He's, as you said, he's in that day rate role. That's probably the entirety of his role is in the trailer. And uh, yeah, no, it just looks like a steaming turd. It looks just like, he looks, there's, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I've already forgotten it from watching the trailer about thirty minutes ago. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a uh, trash. But just from when I was uh, putting this on, so I looked at the poster. Ah, oh, this this is going to be special, and it was. It really, <laughs> really was. Uh, that 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 trailer with Mike Tyson 
um, a couple of weeks ago was better than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that Mike Tyson trailer was freaking special. <laughs> I haven't even seen this. Oh, oh, it's, oh, oh. it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's but, but so is, bad. But the thing is, after the... Do you, Greg, do you remember a show called Sunset Beach? Yes, yeah. So it's that level of, it's so bad, it's good. You're very compelled to what... Is it uh, really this bad? It can't be. And then you just it's like a parody of uh, the day, you know, Sunset Beach. Yeah, uh, it's called Desert Strike. So check it out. Um, was it? I think you said it was like um, Egyptian film or something. It was like Egyptian. Yeah, 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 that's right. It's an Egyptian film. Uh, so basically, Tyson yeah, Mike the Tyson, mountain, the mountain from Game of Thrones. They're the. Lead. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce his name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they put his name up like if everybody knew who he was. And I was like, and then it was like brackets. Oh, right. The mountain from Game the of mountain Thrones. The mountain from Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. When okay. you have to put your your other role in brackets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they should and it's just two guys with a list uh, dude like, sharing one each of other. the CSIs. And what about yeah. The dude ago. from CSI who lasted three seasons yeah. in this film. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's 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 a bad trailer and it's probably a bad film. So uh, if sorry for for the people that made it, if this was your first gig, I understand how you feel, but a bad film is a bad film. A bad trailer you know, is a bad trailer. You know a, what? This reminds me of uh, Jiu Jitsu, the cinematic classic that is Jiu Jitsu with Nicolas Cage. I'm being so sarcastic. That film was so turd. Oh, I haven't got a chance to watch it. It yet. is so but bad. It's got Nicolas Cage in it. So, are... so, but <laughs> saying that, saying that though, Nicolas Cage, when he came on screen, show stealer. He all of a sudden the movie got awesome because you were laughing your ass off. Of course, the minute, but the minute he disappeared, you were like, "Oh shit, come back! Just come back!" <laughs> it's just what, so what, bad. That's the thing. My point, my point being is, is that like he was not the star of that movie. He was just some guy that just shows up, and you were yeah. following some other guy who you'd never seen in anything ever. And then it was just like boring action scene after boring action scene, and oh, Predator showed up, but. I'm not saying Predator will shop in this, but this is a good example of like someone nobody knows in a film. Famous guy gets paid, just gets paid for three days' work. Done. Just you know? a disclaimer: Predator is not in that that film Jiu Jitsu. It's a predator-like creature. So um, if you're look, if you if you're hanging on Sasha's word that Predator is in that <laughs> film, it actually is not. <laughs> so, and, and, and trust and me, it really is a Predator, man. It's some some. It, it really is like. The, the Some Primark, guy. the Primark toy of Predator fighting Some like guy a helmet. ninja. Some guy More like helmet. Wish, bro. Mm. Wish. <laughs> Give Primark some credit, yeah? Oh, God. Well, we talked about this far too long. What's next? <laughs> um, what's next? Okay, so Run, run Fight, Hide. Run, Fight, Hide. Um, yeah, what do you guys think hard. of... Yeah, yeah. It's Die Hard in the School. <laughs> Die Hard in the School. Kai Rankin did this. It's got Thomas Jane in there. Um, I like a bit of jo Thomas Jane. He's a good actor. Um, this trailer, I actually like. And I'll tell you why. Because um, I actually had this exact idea about 15 years ago. And everyone told me, oh, that would be a bad movie to make. You can't make that and set an action movie in the school. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe everyone's right. Maybe you can't do that. Maybe that is harsh. And then they go and fucking make it. <laughs> they go and fucking make it. I'm not saying it's good, but... You know, I, I think it's the best trailer that's that we've seen out of the ones that we've picked today. What do you guys think? I think it's very brave to make it because you're only ever one school shooting away from this being unreleasable. And yeah. that's the problem. It's like, I can't remember. There were certain movies were sort of not released for years because of dumb blame and certain things happened. And, mm. and certain school shootings have a tendency of stopping any sort of violent movies, let alone something about a school shooting in a school. And it's a sad state of affairs to say in America, it's a far too common thing. So I don't know, maybe it's because of COVID or whatever, and they thought, well, half the schools are closed or whatever. Maybe we've got a little <laughs> window to be able to release this before it becomes unreleasable, um, which is sad, but, you know, obviously. Um, yeah, it looks all right. It looks like Teenage Die Hard. Um, I like the fact that it's a female protagonist. It looks, you know, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and... Um, I don't know. It, it looks interesting. It, 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 you know, I'd, I'd watch it. I don't think it's going to be game-changing, but I think it could be 
a bit of fun, a bit of a nice sort of evening, sort of watching something that's not going to tax you too much. Um, I also think because of the type of environment it's set in, it is going to feel more tense. You feel the stakes are a little bit higher because it involves kids and stuff like that. Um, uh, so I think compared to your other kind of action type movies or, you know, set pieces where, you know, it involves like one location or just a couple of locations, that's kind of what maybe may make the difference to this. Um, I think you will feel a little bit more gripped because you don't really know what a school shooting looks like, right? So it's all up to your imagination. So I know, obviously, when I watched 13 Reasons Why, and they did um, something similar in that in the last season, involving a school shooting, it was it was tense because it played on all the sounds and you didn't really see who the attacker was. And it was like, oh, shit, you know, it's, you imagine being in that situation. So um, I think if they do a little bit of that, um, but this does look quite bold in terms of his action set pieces as well so mm. hopefully they don't go over the top too much where they hopefully went more of a realistic line about it mm. but we'll have to wait and see but yeah i, I enjoy the trailer and it's what well, that's what i want to watch it looks that's like it's shot from the point of view of, of you know the girl obviously not mm. literally from her point of view but but you know it's focusing on her but i really hope they don't miss an opportunity to have the school shooters actually I don't know, display some sort of three dimensionality and, and maybe looking to why this happens and look at the psychology yeah. of that rather yeah. than just have them as generic sort of like teenage bad guys or whatever, because yeah. it would be nice. And, and I hope they have a decent look and it's not just some sort of preachy person saying, well, they play too many video games or they listen to rock music or some fucking shit like that. That's going to just kind of sort of make all these PTA mums go, see, we told you, we told you. So um, I, I'd like to think that they're actually going to, make it a little bit three-dimensional but i'm not holding my breath on that but we'll see mm -hmm. yeah i mean i feel i feel if you're going to tackle a subject like this you have to make it a little bit more about the drama than the action if that makes sense i feel it's a dramatic subject and it is a subject that happens more in that country than this one um I mean, but, it doesn't happen here. Well, it doesn't happen here. We had one incident and everyone handed in their guns. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everyone, whole country did. And we we don't have a gun problem in this country, not really. Um, At all. But yeah, um, in, in the States, obviously it's more commonplace. And I totally agree with everything Greg said. You need to have three-dimensional characters. It needs to be really well written to get different perspectives and point of view over why such a thing would happen in the first place um because you don't want to go michael bay action movie because you're glorifying the subject a bit too much and you don't know what kind of message that will send across schools and stuff anyway with kids but um yeah totally agree with everything you said there it is the better trailer out of all of that out of all of them for sure um but yeah that's I, st I still really. think the trailer that um, I saw today was the, the best one. Man, you should have forwarded it to me one. before I put the show notes out, man. <laughs> well, I mean, you sent me... Uh, doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> Everyone listening to this this podcast is now going to be longing to watch one trailer we don't discuss now. Everyone's going to be yeah. going, you want to watch the gold one with the dude that died in, in Walking Dead, man? Yeah. The That's one by which every other thing is, is a turd by comparison. I mean, <laughs> That's me being overly critical, but yes. <laughs> that one is going to be coming to Zito's gang for its uh, poor yes. quote. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> you've got a turd and you've got gold. Which one do you think this is? It's gold. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what's next, Satch? I guess main topics now. Okay. So we've discussed this before, but it has finally been confirmed. Michael B. Jordan is directing creed free how do we all feel about it i i think this is great news good a good a good low budget kind of feature to go go in as your first movie as all the rocky films have been i mean like sure like sylvester stallone cut his teeth on rocky 2 um who else um black panther director who did the first one um, um, um oh uh, forgotten his name shit googler Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler. Yeah. He cut, you know, okay, it was like his second movie because he did Fruitfield Station first. But, you know, I think it's a good good franchise for any first time director to kind of cut their teeth in. You get the dramatics and also you can showcase with, a, with the right DOP, you could really get some good action in there with the with the boxing and stuff i really hope that he because i know him and ryan kugler are really tight-knit and best friends i hope that he 
is able to borrow Ryan Coogler's DOP that went mm -hmm. with him with Black Panther because the stuff he did in Creed, like I liked Creed 2, I liked it, but I felt the fight um, cinematography was a step back compared to what was showcased in the first Creed because I really feel that Ryan Coogler and his DOP really kind of brought us a new dimension to how f how fights are shot kind of thing um, I know a lot of people didn't probably didn't see what I saw in those fights but what I saw in those fights was something a little bit more kinetic with camera movement and the way boxing is filmed and I felt that really really brought a lot of edge to the fighting so um, I'm, he doesn't have to do that he could do something standard as well but um, because I know he's got those connects it'd be really exciting I feel and it's a good it's a good movie to cut his teeth in um, in terms of Creed I hope they bring it I don't know where we all sit with Rocky but personally for me like I love Sylvester Stallone I love Rocky I felt Creed 2 gave him the perfect swan song if he was to come back and I know Sylvester Stallone is a little bit iffy about coming back because he gave him the perfect swan song to leave the series I would only want him to come in at a cameo like in the ring kind of thing you know um, I wouldn't want to be not in the ring like you know supporting yeah. supporting, okay. supporting sorry sorry yeah you're right um support you know supporting in the ring quick cameo kind of thing just so that we we have him there but i don't necessarily want rocky balboa to be the heart and the anchor of the tower i personally think that it's time that creed stands up for itself away from the shadow of rocky balboa and becomes its own animal and other thing I want on my wish list is let's have a charismatic villain because I feel the past three Rocky films we've had villains that 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 yeah they're they're professional boxers and stuff but they were they were villains that didn't really have a character you know I mean, what I mean you, you, uh, you, you headed to Cheese Factory if if you start to go if you, true, if you but go then, too much towards the eighties it's Cheese Factory and I think I, I, get, I think they're trying to stand these films up in the, yeah in, I, the, in I, the modern I, world <laughs> so it's I hear I hear what you're saying but then if you just got to look at Carl Weathers' performance in the first film, which isn't Cheese Factor. And he was charismatic. He was compelling. And that's what I feel we need from, from a, um, from a, from a Rocky stroke Creed villain right now. We need that again. We need an antagonist that brings something fresh to the series. I yeah, think. I'd rather go the kind of the opposite way and not have like a bad guy. I want a guy that you actually might want to root for as well. Yeah. So as an audience member, you're kind of conflicted about who you actually are rooting for. So like you said, with um, uh, Weather's performance, you know, he had this um, bravado about him in the ring, mm. but like outside the ring, he had a confidence, but also a kind of a vulnerability as well. So yeah. I mean, if you kind of show somebody in that sense that, you know, somebody's up and coming and trying to fight as much as he is, um, I'd like to see that. See, it's just a bit of a different, different dynamic, dynamic to it. Oh, yeah, um, totally. Just a good guy versus the bad guy. Oh yeah, totally. But I, what I'm trying to say is don't just be two dimensional. Here's villain, go beat him up. You know what I mean? Cause I feel we've had that the past three movies, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. No, uh, no, 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 no. Um, Creed, um, it was him trying to figure himself out. He met Rocky, understood what that dynamic was. He had a fight. Did, did, did he win that fight? Yeah, he won that fight. Okay. But, and, but, and, but, but the villain of that, the, not the villain, but the contender of that, one dimensional. No, he's just a, he's a boxer. Yeah, but, uh, uh, well, but then you've missed my point. What I've tried to say. Yeah, but in, <laughs> in Creed, with Creed two, you got there was a whole there's there's four dynamics going on. One being an uh, old character, and his and the son's old character. Um, it, I I think I thought that was good enough um but that's not the character of the boxer himself he's leaning way too much on the legacy there which is what we want but him himself drago jr he was just i'm drago jr this is my yeah, this, is, this living, is my game he was living you know in mean? the shadow of his father which was quite apparent in the film yeah, yeah uh, but it's, it's I, I i don't know i i felt i felt quite touched by that that they humanized drago in a way that the in the foot in the Rocky Four is like a robot. It was like a robot. I will crush you. Mm -hmm. I will kill you. That, that, it's yeah, but again, you're leaning into legacy. We're not talking about the character as being his own presence and personality. There, you know what I mean. That's a total different. That's a total different thing because you're talking about what he represents in in terms of his legacy. You're not yeah. talking about him. Uh, you know, uh, as a but, character. But what my my because I felt for um, Drago's son because he was trying to 
I want to be a boxing my own right, but I've got to do this for my father because of reasons. And um, it's he didn't he didn't know where to put himself, and that's what I that's what I liked about that yeah. dynamic. It was completely different to anything else we've seen in the other Rocky films. There was nothing like that, apart from Rocky's son, I guess, who was a bit of a douchebag. But um, um, I, I've, Ken's idea is pretty good as well in terms of having someone else that you, you like. Instead, yeah. of, instead of having a bit like a like yeah. Mr. T, Mr. Yeah. T's son <laughs> coming, coming along, <laughs> um, it, have someone that you equally like and um, oh shit! Who do you, who do you root for? I don't know the dynamic between that what that story would be, but it's better than again going down the status quo of um, having having another. Uh, okay, if in fact if if you were gonna, who would you like to? What would you like to see in this third film? I think I think the other thing you can consider is actually having the Dragos return because you've got a story there that can continue. Um, because obviously you get that relationship build between the son and the father. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I like, I like the idea of Rocky not being in it, like you say, um, otherwise you end up potentially him dying, you know, cause they tease his death in the last one. So you can't have him then potentially die in the next one. I love Mickey, you know, like he loses his mentor and stuff like that. Um, I don't like the idea of him being killed off screen either. I don't think that would be right. So I think just Rocky just needs to be out of the picture. He's retired. He's, you know, he's, you know, he, he met with his son at the end of the last one, yeah. you know, so he's gone off and, you know, spending time with his family. Now he's, he's kind of left that life behind him. And, you know, I think we need a bit of a time jump. Um, you know, to the next one. So, you know, maybe it's like three or four years later, um, you know, he's got on top of his game, you know, he's become a, well, you know, the champion that he, he believes he should have been um, comparisons to his father's legacy. So he's always trying to, you know, meet that legacy thing. And then, you know, maybe depending on the act of acting ability of the Drogo Jr., you know, he's kind of been haunted by that loss, you know, earlier on in his career and it's not allowed him to get where he wanted to. And he starts, you know, building his momentum to try and get that rematch. So, you know, it could be a rematch. He could beat him, you know, and so then they go to a rubber for a third. So you get two fights in the movie. Um, so, you know, he becomes like a little bit, a little bit like Rocky three, I guess he becomes a little bit overconfident, but then, you know, this guy, you know, he wants to come and revenge. He gets the win and then they have to have a third rubber match at the end to kind of tie off that series and them. So that's one potential route as opposed to just continuing, just put his another fighter in the way. Um, because I think that, um, Drogo definitely has a little bit more to him. And I think the acting ability of, um, Dolph Lundgren has improved, um, and I think that he could probably carry a little bit more uh, for the next movie. So personally, if I was doing it, that's where I would take it. Yeah. I would still have to drive. Yeah, with me, have, um, I, yeah, with me, I just feel that I want something fresh and new. That's all. That's why I want a new a new challenger where we could go anywhere with him. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just don't want it to keep relying on Rocky's legacy. You know what I mean? Oh, don't yeah, get me but that's, wrong. that's why it, it depends on Drogo Jr. His his account because like because Drogo doesn't need to be in it that much. It should be more about Drogo Jr. Again, stepping out of the shadow of his dad and trying to you know be what he yeah. wants to be. Because then what you're doing is continuing a theme rather than just being here's another fire. He's going to beat him. Yeah. You know, there's there's no stakes. There's no consequence. You know, then, so when we watched the original Rocky movies, we got to we got to Club Lane. He was yeah, the new third guy. film. So yeah, the but, first the first two movies was the same person. Then you yeah. got a third. We've had one for uh, Creed one, another one for Creed yeah. two. Then you have a third by the time three. Creed. It's just like villain of the week. You know what I mean? It's just like so you want a little bit more of an overarching story. Personally, that's what I'd want yeah. from it, rather than something just fresh. You can have other boxes. You know, he can have smaller issues with smaller fights, smaller yeah. you know scene yeah. time with. Well, but you want that overarching thing of the other person saying he beat me he's taken the career that I was supposed to have. I'm going to come and get him. Yeah. Because ultimately well, that's what Kaba Lang was like, you yeah. don't deserve where you need to be, beat him. And you know, he had to come back fighting. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I get, I get that. that. I get that. But again, I'd prefer something fresh and new. That's just mm -hmm. me. That's just the me. Problem, the problem um, is they, yeah. they have to go either, they either have to lean into it and carry on with this sort of Cobra Kai-esque, let's hash on the past and love it. And in fairness, the, the fact that it does call back to Rocky is a lot of the reasons that people like it, even people who aren't into it. I mean, when Rocky tried to get away from Rocky's legacy in Rocky V, the one we don't talk about, <laughs> and quite not having a fight in, it was shit. And so that's why people love the, the Rocky things. Yes, it is very 
much from the same playbook. And and anything they do, really, as you said, if Rocky died, it would be very Mickey esque. If 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 you know Creed is now like a world superstar, the only way to do it is to bring him down a peg or two and then fight back, which is very Rocky three. Maybe maybe Rocky dies and Drago comes into his corner and it becomes like Rocky oh, wow. four. It could be something like whatever they do is going to hark back to that. Or they could, as you said, I, I like Ken's idea of just going, well, let's make someone who's not the protagonist. Uh, sorry, not the antagonist, is, is a second protagonist. Because the greatest fighting movie outside of the Rocky um, series, in my opinion, is Warrior. And, oh, yeah, yeah, and really the fact that you, the two brothers, you're like, I really don't know which one I want to win. You kind of want to feel for the family man, but you also feel for the sort of prodigal son. So you don't know which ones are kind of root for and the fact that it all comes together. So who knows? I, I don't know. But they, they've either got to decide if they are going to get away from Rocky. And by doing that, they have to, while in existing in that universe, kind of keeps Sylvester Stallone out of it and probably try to stay away from that as well. But I agree that also that Drago has more sort of play as well. And Dolph Lundgren is a lot less um, sort of 2D as he was in Rocky Four, which at the time, is a problem at the time, it was my favourite of the Rocky movies. Yeah, so yeah. Rocky. yeah exactly. Oh. So that's a oh. really good comparison with Cobra Kai, to be honest, because mm. everything in Cobra Kai relates back to those original movies, like everything. Yeah. And we're loving it. We're feeding off of it. You know, and the yeah. Rocky franchise is very much of that. It's about the history, about the whole franchise. You know, hence why, you know, Sylvester Sloan is doing a director's cut of Rocky Four. People want that nostalgia. And, you know, that's, yeah, one of the reasons why we like Creed 1 and 2, because it had something fresh in it but it relied on a lot of the old cast and characters and the themes and stuff of the previous movies. And that's what we get with the Cobra Kai series. You know, we've got the two older guys, we're getting this younger generation coming through and, yeah. you know, you're liking all the characters. So I think it's a really good comparison. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally, I think you want to get the right balance of making it its own beast while also kind of having a few little moments, but make, make them cameo, make them little nods and all Easter eggs or stuff back to the original series, but mm. try not to make a a remake of because i mean the rocky balboa a great film but it was really just like rocky one it was the story of rocky one told but with him as an old man and and these things often are it's like the star wars films you know the, the new trilogy started off with a remake of the first mm -hmm. well the first film but we people like it most of the time let's not get mm -hmm. to star wars obviously but people like it most of the time because they go oh it reminds us of something from yesteryear and obviously with with Cobra Kai and the madness of stuff like Reunited Apart showing that everyone loves, you know, their childhood in the 80s and sort of from the 90s and stuff. So, but yeah, I, I, I personally like them to go sort of warrior-esque with it and, and yeah. have a little bit more drama and a little bit more um, sort of, you know, characters, you know, in the ring that are, are possible, like, you know, likeable. But as we go back to the idea that, that you know, that these actors, you know, are over the top and what have you as, as you know, like the sort of villain of the week, have you seen boxers? Have you seen people like Conor McHoud and well, any boxer in history? They're just the most over the top things any, anyway. You kind of have to rein them in to make them more believable in film. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, uh, but I also think it depends on how many more movies they're anticipating because if, if it's going to finish a Creed 3, obviously depending on where Michael B. Jordan sees himself like that, you need to tie up the series in a satisfactory way, which is oh. where I would have the Drogo stuff. If they think there's going to be a three and a four and he might continue a little bit more, you can stretch that out a little bit mm. and you can have a new protagonist and something in number three. Otherwise, I think there isn't enough continuity to bind those films together to, for a trilogy. Um, so, but I think it all depends on yeah, where they see the series going longer term. The problem is, is that decision often isn't made by the creative people who make it. But it's the it's the studios. They just yeah, it'll all, it'll all be down to it'll be, it'll be all down to Michael B. Jordan. So they won't recast because it doesn't make sense or do yeah. something different. But so I think if he says, look, I'll star and direct. This is my last one. That might you know lend the way to the way they're going to tell the story. If he yeah. says, I don't know, then they'll probably do it with a bit more of an open end and just say, right, we'll see what happens and we'll try and do another one in a couple of years. Is it MGM yeah. that still owned the Rocky series and Creed series? Yes, that's correct. Right. Considering that there's a sale going on, be interesting to see where this picture lies in the next couple of months because obviously MGM are looking to sell up all their IPs or even the whole studio. So we'll have to see and talk more about that when more news comes. Warner about. Brothers is actually uh, Warner Brothers actually owns Creed. Oh, is it Warner no Brothers? No way. Oh, you sure? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Why did I think it was MGM? Because MGM did the last ones. Um, MGM, yeah, distrib- Yeah, so Rocky obviously was distributed oh. by MGM, Sony Pictures and stuff, but it, the actual Creed series is Warner Brothers. Okay. okay. You sure that's not a dual partnership like how... MGM there might be, but that's that's why it's showing up on here is who owns oh, okay. it. Okay. Because, yeah, because, you know, as you've known, the past decade or so, MGM, they can't really, like, fund movies the way they do, so they usually team up with a, another studio like Sony for Robocop mm-hmm. and um, various other franchises. Um, they usually team up with a different studio hence bond hence the whole bond thing because before they used to launch bond by itself but now in recent years they've had to team up with uh sony and in this case universal for no time to die so that's and that's united why i always artists. yeah and united artists so that's why um yeah that's why i question that warner brothers thing so um because it's the same with the hobbit because they own the rights to the hobbit they t- yeah but anyway um Moving on, we may as well segue into Cobra Kai. Since we're talking, since we're talking about Rocky, they're kind of like brother and sister. I mean, who's mm. the director of Rocky? He also directed the the Karate Kid. Same director, believe it or not. Um, I've forgotten his name, and I'm not going to even you're, try and butcher it and pronounce it. it. You're doing but, this out of sequence, so it's really screwed up my uh, graphic uh, thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how that worked with the. I, I assumed you were gonna. I, I assumed you were gonna go. <laughs> shall we get one shall, by one by? I think uh, you almost have to though. Uh, yeah, Cobra Kai automatically. The, 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 I mean, Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go Cobra Kai it. came from Karate Kid, which really came from the idea of let's do a teenage version of, of, of uh, you know, Rocky, and you know, even stuff like the the best around. You know, that great song was was one of the songs rejected for. Um, oh from uh, Rocky 3, they decided right. to go via the tiger. And so he kept the idea of that song until Karate Kid. So it really is, let's use the scraps and the ideas from Rocky and turn it into this, you know, absolutely immortal movie. And I love Rocky, the whole series growing up, bar the one we don't talk about. But <laughs> Karate Kid was my jam. The Karate Kid 1, 2, 3 were like my favourite films. I must have seen the Karate Kid like 50, 100 times. I love that film. So obviously Cobra Kai is absolutely awesome. So. Yeah, the, the the director, like you said, Sasha, who did Rocky, he did he did Rocky, he did Cry Kid one, two, and three, and then he did Rocky five. Oh, oh wow! Okay. So he gave birth to Rocky and buried it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he if uh, you bring something into this world, you can take it out. <laughs> really did as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so Cobra Kai, um, this is uh, C- it's going up to season six or series six. As we That's right. The, the writers, producers of Cobra Kai, they've labelled it as... They, there was a big whole thing where they were talking about it because obviously the new season had come out. And you really got to know what the, where the writers' heads were at. And they said they weren't interested in Star Wars growing up. There was one movie franchise that they were obsessed with and it was the Karate Kid saga. And they were like, they liked, they liked all the Karate Kid films. They know they they said they could quote quote all three of those films like a like a Star Wars films. And ever since they've been in Hollywood, when they worked on one of those American Pie movies, um, they were like, one day we're going to bring that shit back, and they did. And um, it shows. It really shows when you have the passion for something. Goodness comes because fucking hell. End of season three. I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but. We've all seen Mandalorian or know what happened at the end of Mandalorian. Yeah, all right. I know Ken does. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm waiting for that episode to be released. So I can share the story with everyone. Yeah. So, so oh, basically, wait, wait, wait. so so basic, basically, without spoiling it, I'm just going to say they unleashed a demon in that last episode, and I I was like, oh my god, this is the best fucking TV show now. I don't care. Like after Mando, after Mando, of course. But, but, Reap, like, Reap. but my God, my God, I was, I was like, wow. So <laughs> these guys, they know their shit. It's going on six seasons, and they're talking potential spinoffs. They're talking like stuff with fucking Greece, young Greece, and stuff in a Greece, Greece, <laughs> Greece, Greece. Oh, wait, you said Greece. No, I said young Greece. Greece. <laughs> And stuff and like all different types of spin-offs. I don't know guys, how do you guys feel about like Cobra Kai, six season plan and um spin-offs? 
The only bit that scares me is the idea of, of flogging, not a dead horse, but mm. taking it beyond its its natural sort of thing. I mean, it's, we are three seasons in, and it's brilliant, but it has ended with something like a pairing. Uh, how, how much can we discuss some sort of spoilers and what have you? Can I just shout out a big spoiler warning for anyone listening? And then yeah, yeah. Spoiler, yeah. spoiler warning for anyone who isn't up to <laughs> I'm going to discuss ep- things that are in the very last episode of the series. So, spoiler warning for that. It's all fair game now. But it's ended with um, it's ended with that you know that nice moment where sort of Danielson and uh, and Zabka have got together. So you've got Johnny and and Daniel finally you know fighting a, a greater thing, and it's really nice. It's been hinting at that throughout the, the whole of the run so far. You know, all three series that they they have things in common and stuff. So the question is, is is what you've got the whole of next series will be about that. But then what for the series after and the one after that and the one after that? Are we going to be flogging a dead horse? Is is Terry Silver, who presumably is going to be the big bad of next year alongside Chris, uh, is, uh, are they going to be, a, they're going to be enough for next season? But what after that? Are we going to start bringing in? Mike Barnes or some of the characters from the next Karate Kid, which no one ever watched or stuff like that, or you know, or maybe Hilary Swank. That's yeah, just about I mean, Hilary Swank would be. I mean, you know, I, I I'm not a big. I haven't seen the next Karate Kid for a long, long time. <laughs> There's a reason. I, yeah, but you know, and wasn't Swank, Michael yeah. Ironside in that? Um, but so far, I mean, they you know the characters they brought in have been amazing. Chosen in this series was was great. How they subverted the expectations; it didn't just become a Japanese version of the rivalry. It just it became like uh, something very different. And so they've got more play with him, like the Drago character. They could do a lot more with him as one of the protagonists as well. But but at what point have they done all the ideas? The only thing that that makes me happy is that it is, as you say, in really good hands. People who are clearly fanboys, if they're talking about six series. One would hope it's because they've got six series worth of really good dynamite series to, to, to tell. But but yeah, I'll wait to see. I don't want them to I don't want it to get to series five and then go Game of Thrones where they're just just chatting out shit and such. So I really hope they do something good for the next three series. I mean I'm yeah. not wait for the next And the, what's great is they said they've actually got they've got an end game in plan. So, you know, a lot of these series, they just write and write and, you know, they yeah. kind of see where it goes, but they have got an end game in plan. So as long as they map, like you say, they map it out correctly, um, you know, you don't want it to go on too long because I think, yeah, the whole premise, you can drag it out and it will just become a little bit stale. You know, we've seen certain seasons, series, especially like if you take a look at things like Marvel, like um, uh, Marvel on Netflix, if you look at the series like um, Luke Cage, really good premise, but they really drag those episodes out um you know and that's just over a season so to take this story over six seasons yeah you know it's like johnny gonna get daniel's daughter pregnant or something you know it's like what's gonna happen next it's just gonna be some like so proper shit you know so um, but now they're friends i don't want to see them not be friends or i mean they're always gonna be begrudgingly friends but now Mm -hmm. they're sorts of allies i want them to stay as allies and maybe have a slip Mm -hmm. up or what have you but if it goes back to something big happens and we hate each other again um either by series five or something yeah, then it's just gonna piss me off because then series five and six are gonna be like a rehash of series one and two where they just don't yeah. like each other. So I want them as long as they have got a coherent story, and it's not just rehashing the series they've already done. But I mean, it's not boring yet, and it's just growing, right. growing, growing. And series three was awesome. So the way the way that I would finish it um, for the end of the season six is very much like they did with Rocky. So you have Daniel and Johnny in a dojo. There's a fight between the two of them to kind of sell who is a better fighter. You have hit, Daniel do his crane kick, Johnny do some kind of spinning kick, the connecting at the same time, cuts, and that's it. That that is how I'd end that. The, the it would be really quite nice. It would be, there would be yeah. something very poetic about it, kind of saying that neither is the antagonist. They're both the good guys yeah. and stuff. So, in my mind, with that ending. Johnny beat the shit out of LaRusso. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man, you, you you cut there and then you just you then you play the then you play that song. You know the best. Yeah. That's, what, yeah. that, that, that's what you do. Is. That's that's how you that's finish it. the series, man. Oh yeah. man, have they have they played that in the series yet again? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty sure yeah. they have. They have. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, has a I'll, sick I'll, soundtrack. I'll rewatch the whole series. three. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get Emma to watch it. I'm gonna rewatch the whole three <laughs> series. It's so so good. good. So I, I literally binged Cobra Kai series three in one day. I just like just Richard has. Yeah, I watched all on New Year's Day back to back. Yeah. Ken, Richard has folded, by the way. Oh, has he started? You know, he hasn't started, but he says, okay, you're going on about this end finale of season three. I'm going to I'm gonna watch it. He told me he's going to watch it. So, Has he watched season one and two? No, he hasn't seen any of it. He's not going to watch it. <laughs> He'll watch it. He'll watch it. <laughs> he's just saying it to shut you up. <laughs> well, if right. he listens to this, I've given him fair game that there are spoilers for that. I have to skip some, but... But yeah, I'm, it's I'm, really, I'm, I'm, it really I'm is one of the best series on on TV at the moment. For me, it is just the perfect series because it just it's such I mean, it's such a clever retelling of you know the idea of that Johnny isn't this antagonist, and so the, the premise is awesome to begin with. And look, the acting's not great; we know that, but it's not about that. It's uh, well, I mean, I've seen this being dissed in certain WhatsApps discussion things and what have you but i don't mind the acting i don't no see- no it's no it's, it's 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 i don't mind it at all i think it, it and especially if you're looking at it as a tv show it's fine as well you know it's not hugely dramatic performances but it hits the right notes for me you know it's what oh, i expect well, and it's the tone of the show in the movie so i don't see it as poor acting i'm just like this is what i want this is what i expect so I'm i fine. don't I don't see it as the greatest acting in the, you know, it's not Oscar bait and stuff, not that it could be, but the whole point is, is, is I don't ever look at it and go, this is really bad acting. And there is TV where I go, oh my God, I can't watch any more of this because the acting is so bad. It's like they're reading the lines still or, mm-hmm. or, or they they just never, they couldn't act their way out of a wet paper bag. Whereas I don't see that. It's they're, they're, you know, they're the same sort of level of acting as one would see from, any teen drama and this and that which is normally okay you know it's not amazing but it's probably not terrible but yeah i i just love it because i'm just karate kid fan from the off loved it so right um uh what's next uh, oh, oh no. is, has everyone aired the the nuances about um going up to season six you i mean you this is something we can do a whole podcast on. <laughs> yeah just, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, the just only thing I don't know is about spin offs. And, and I'll, uh, we'll just discuss it today. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what's next, Sarge? Okay. So, next up. So, yeah. Lucasfilm have confirmed that Rogue Squadron will be set after episode nine, Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Ash? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really got much to say about it. Ash, um, you have an opinion on this, do you? Uh, yeah, you Wonder Woman. What? Wonder Woman eighty four is a pile of trash, so I don't really care for this at the moment nope. until I see something more tangible. Um, you know, whether they'll bring Poe back and he'll be part of that squadron, <laughs> who knows? They'll have to pay him Harrison full money to bring him back to Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> see, that, that, I, I don't want to rehash. Yeah, I don't want to re- he, he'll, wanna... he'll do it. For the right, yeah, I'll do anything for the right paycheck. It's Disney money, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna rehash like what I said in the podcast before, okay? But wrong era, bro, wrong era. But fair enough, I guess they can re remodel it and reshape it for the next generation of Star Wars fans that isn't me. That's cool. Um, I hope they like it. Um, that's that's all I got to say about that. Um, Patty Jenkins, look, she misstepped on Wonder Woman 84, for sure. <laughs> Miss um, <it>. Miss, <laughs> okay. All right. That, that's Miss. the Supergirl of, of the 2020s. Yeah. Oh, Do you remember yeah. Supergirl? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's only because I, It's only because I saw you guys trashing it so much. I went, I'm not going to rush out to see that. <laughs> So I like um, the first Wonder Woman, and it's rare that I like yeah. the DC universe because normally it's pretty shit. So yeah, um, I mean, I like the first one. Like, I liked it, um, and I liked. Her, and you got to understand, she's she's still the director that gave Charlie Theron her Oscar in Monster. She was the director of Monster, so she's two. She's made one misstep. This is a completely different franchise. Fair enough, it's not exciting me by the premise and stuff and the direction that they're going, but you know what? Maybe her original idea might be might be exciting enough on screen, but until I see a trailer, I'm not sold because, like, I've, yeah. I, I think it's more to do with her writing than anything else because she wrote Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84 as well. So um, she didn't That's... write the first one. 
it's that's great, true, but then, I, that's true. But then the other the other elephant in the room, there were two other writers on that, and one of them was Jeff Jones, who's <laughs> who's in my bad books, who's totally in my bad books. This guy was supposed to be like the DC universe's saving grace, man. When I heard Jeff Jones was being being a producer or writer in the DCEU, I I got excited because Jeff Jones has only written some of the best like damn comic books ever yeah, for DC books. ever. Comic and that's, the, yeah. And that's the thing. It's, it's literally an example of when you're a comic fan, why don't they get the writers? And then when they do, they fuck shit up. They don't fuck shit up. And he's fucked shit up. He's fucked shit up hardcore. And yeah, I saw his name. I was like, okay, he's writing scripts. Could go either way. And then we got the movie we got, and it was a dumpster fire. But yeah, um, enough about enough about Wonder Woman. But Rogue Squadron, we'll see, we'll see. Will we? Next, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I, maybe. I don't. I, I don't hate the uh, the new trilogy as much as some people. I know you such absolutely hate it, and I, I I don't dislike it. I don't think it's as good as the first trilogy. Obviously, um, I don't think it's as bad as the prequels. I. I I like it. I think it sort of sits in between that. It is, it is, you know, sort of the shit that is between the gold and redemption at the moment. It is, it is, uh, hey, a lot of play out of this. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I think it's okay. I think it's, um, you know, the second one was a bit of a dumpster fire, but, it, you know, even that was had some redeeming points. So I don't hate it. I think that Star Wars on TV seems to be the way that they're getting to really explore characters and, do these amazing things if if it's this anything the like the mandalorian it could be absolutely phenomenal and i think they it, they really do need to bring poe back if they don't it's going to be really a, a bit shit but then you know who knows i mean rogue one was all brand new characters you know it had to be because you weren't going to know any of them after this there was obviously a an obvious ending and um and it was one of the greatest new star wars movies out there so yeah, so yeah i think that if they do it right it could be very good um uh obviously spoilers if you haven't seen all the mandalorian but if you haven't what the fuck's wrong with you um but i'm excited having seen you know ahsoka and people turn up and what have you i'm just really excited about how good some of these spin-offs can happen and at the end of the day, Disney's going with the we're going to throw so many at you, you're going to like some of them just by, you know. Yeah. And John, and John Favreau is going to be the Kevin Feige of that TV universe. And I think that's the important thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've seen a meme recently where it's like John Favreau does a Christmas film, an elf, and it's an instant classic. He starts the Marvel Universe, it's the biggest thing ever. He takes over the reign of, yeah. of Star Wars, and it's everything is good in the Star Wars universe again. So, yeah, it's John Favreau is the Kevin Feige, and I've said many a times. Obviously, as a massive fan of the MCU, you need a Kevin Feige like person at the top of it, and that person is not George Lucas, and it's definitely not um, uh, God. Who's Kathleen Kennedy or who? Kennedy? Yeah, yeah. He, they're fine as keep, keepers of the reins and the budget and the person, what have you, but they're not the people to be. Steered. They're not the storytellers. No. Um, and John Favreau is. So if he's involved with a lot of this and he's given you know, the carte blanche to kind of be the Kevin Feige character. Yeah. Than I have and can you just imagine if those movies had a Favreau as an, as, as the guide, the producer over those three movies, for the sequel. Well, that was different. It could be. Is, oh. is, is Ryan Johnson basically took what JJ Abrams <laughs> done and decided I'm going to have to subvert everything and fuck it about. And then JJ Abrams came back to it and just went, I'm just going to ignore and pretend you didn't do that. And go, <laughs> ah, you know, when we said you were, you had no parents that were famous. Oh, we lied about that. It's almost as if your movie didn't exist, and and it was just like it was like they were bickering in movies, yeah. and they were making up as they go along. Because even that's the problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, Daisy Ridley even said they kept changing who her character was. They, you yeah. know, all the way through filming, they didn't know she was going to be Luke's daughter, and then she was going to be Han's thing, and then she, you know, then it was Palpatine's thing, and they just kept changing who she was. So they just really didn't have a. Fight. And it's why they weren't, and they didn't live up to the potential. It's why the DCEU is a clusterfuck. It's all of this because you haven't had this ongoing idea for the same reasons that going back and digressing briefly, but as long as the people who are doing Cobra Kai have an overarching story, you know it's going to be good. And it's that sort of thing. If you have the visionaries who've got an idea, you know they're going to turn out something good because they've 
got it mapped out. But yeah, if they're just playing it by ear, then who knows? But yeah, I hope John Favreau's involved more in this, and I hope uh, Patty doesn't write it. Oh, I did say in this podcast back in its early days that Favreau was my first choice for episode seven. And mm-hmm. that was really based on, as I keep saying, his Hall H. Um, when he was promoting Iron Man 1 for the first time in Hall H at Comic-Con mm-hmm. in 2006, I think it was, he he touched upon like his way of filmmaking and how much he liked the original Star Wars. And he started talking about Star Wars, but he was talking about Star Wars in a way how I would talk about Star Wars. Like yeah, little fi- like little things that like most people wouldn't get. I was like, holy shit, he gets it. And I said this back then. I said this, you know what? John Favreau, he knows this shit. And we've already seen what he's done with the MCU. And then when I heard he was behind The Mandalorian, I was intrigued. And then I saw The Mandalorian. I was like, this guy should be <laughs> running things. He should mm-hmm. straight up be running things. But... Yeah, he's not running things entirely. They've got their own little section of the universe. I do believe it's uh, the Mandalorian. Yeah, he's just doing that. He's just doing the the Mandalorian, Ahsoka universe, yeah. Yeah, Ahsoka and Rangers of the Republic. Those are his shows. We're segueing into the next topic, Star Wars The Acolyte, the TV series. I'm definitely not talking about this. Yeah, that's been... Yeah. You just paused. Well, what's that? I thought you froze yourself. I was just like, "Are you okay, dude?" What's going on. You having a stroke, Slash? You're right. So, oh right, sorry. There was like an advert playing, and I was like, "Where's that coming from?" And I had to turn <laughs> down like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most hilarious twenty seconds. That's just hearing voices. It's like, huh? What? what? Yeah, I was like, I was like, everyone? Who's that to- yeah, I was like, who's that talking? And it was like some ad playing in the background. And I was like, huh? Okay, cool. Anyway, yeah. Anyone um, listening to the uh, podcast, we're sorry about the uh, few seconds of dead air there. We'll just read that she turned off briefly. He's back with us. We're back. Yeah. We're back, baby. Yeah, so. The Acolyte. The Acolyte. The Acolyte. Who's doing the Acolyte? Um, the. the- lady that did the doll Russian doll Russian doll lady Russian doll lady I can't yeah. remember her name <laughs> Hang on, give me a sec give me a sec well I mean they're setting it is it way before the is this the one that's okay the so Leslie Headland, who did Russian doll she's been put in charge of the acolyte which is a brand new Star Wars TV show set in the time of this thing called the High Republic, which actually just came out today. It's novel. <laughs> it's it's novel. Um, do, 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 what was the novel called? Fuck the novel. Who cares? Um, <laughs> new novel came out today based in this thing called the High Republic era of Star Wars, which is set like 400 years before the Phantom Menace or A New Hope. And um, yeah, it's set in that time. So as every Star Wars fan has been wanting to know, um, well, there's no Sith because Sith haven't been seen in about a millennia. So who are the bad guys? And, you know, for Lots. ages, for ages, people have been like wondering, like, who are they fighting? What's going on? What's and, stuff. and and um, yeah, Lucasfilm did a whole debut of all the novels and all they're trying to do it in they're trying to do it in phases like marvels with all the books and stuff so like marvel and stuff so they're doing their own jason the world warriors it's jason the world warriors (laughs) man dude you're throwing me off man i'm trying to like get there man (laughs) okay so so they're trying to they're trying to um do their own thing with star wars here it's a whole open era where they haven't fully explored my big concern was like there can't be there can be dark jedi people that have turned and but there can't be no master to guide them we can't have a fully fledged sith we can't have a we can't have a sith master and an apprentice because they haven't revealed themselves to the jedi yet that is law that is canon so a lot of fans were kind of like a lot of people have got on the bandwagon of like slagging this thing off before it's even come out etc but you know they explain their whole thing you know what they're doing and yeah they've got like they've got villains that kind of like 
monster minds from Jason the World Warriors and stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, that, that I saw this villain. The, the, back there. I, I saw this. I saw this villain, and I just thought monster minds. And it turned out I wasn't the only one that thought that. No. As, as, as soon as I saw it, oh, someone's watched Jason the World Warriors. Yeah, I okay. watch Which, every single morning before my paper round. Yeah, oh, which, which, <laughs> eat my weed bakes watching Jason of the World Warriors. Classic. Great. Which itself, which which itself was kind of like a rip off of Star Wars: A New Hope, because you had your Han this, Solo which is why character. It's, funny. You had your, it's yeah. fucking hilarious because it's so, it's self parodying. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got these they've got these um, plants that can't be killed, and apparently they are the scariest things that scare Jedi. But they they feed on they feed on the Force and like dark energy of the force so they are kind of dark side but they're not uh, but they're not sith or anything they're just plant-based beings that will kill people that will kill people and jedi um so like yeah mastermind. yeah it looks what like could a possibly go wrong when well, shami the man made a movie about plants that that was absolutely uh, classic. yeah so but you know what <laughs> you know what it sounds like my, i'm mocking it but you know what i let i let them say what they had to say when i was watching the thing and i was like you know what you know what i'm going to go a different way than i thought i would i actually think they're onto something here i want to see venus fly tra fly traps take on yoda and shit that that so sounds crazy alien shit <laughs> if it's not a little shop of horrors i'm not I don't, or, or jason and the world warrior <laughs> that's when i of that. i've forgotten what the i forgot the, the name these are times when plants are allowable Shamalia Man movies and Star Wars, no. Yeah, so so this is based around that time. It's called the Acolyte. I don't know anything about it other than these books have plant villains and pirates. Yeah, they they gave the pirates who are the main big bads in the first book. They gave them certain names and stuff. I can't remember what the name was, but they're big and bad pirates and. Apparently, George Lucas. Apparently, apparently the Republic and the Jedi are having problem with pirates, and I'm like. Anakin Skywalker would not have a problem with Jack Sparrow. I've seen that episode where Hondo comes on and tries to trick. Um, now I'm going to that era of Star Wars that no one knows what I'm talking about on this podcast, but there's a pirate king called Hondo. He shows up in Star Wars Rebels and he shows up in Clone Wars all up and down and stuff. He's good friends with Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'll be pissed if he doesn't show up in the Obi-Wan show. But really? either way, yeah, Star Wars and pirates, Star Wars and space pirates, they're no biggie for, for Jedis, but, you know... Um, Apparently they are now. So cool. Um, well, we've got pirates and plant things. I, I believe they'll show up in the show. Different. I want to see him do something different and be from like the dark side point of view. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to be you know the uh, the dark side. You know the rise of the Sith um, and that kind of stuff, and just have it from that point of view. So I don't want any good guys, or I want the good guys to get beaten down. I want it to be from the bad point of view. Um, so that's what I want from the series. But other than that. But See, I, that's I just it. About it. But that's just it. I mean, like a thousand years, there are no Sith. They're in the shadows. You know, if they maybe if that was the show. Well, you're contradicting yourself. Are they there, or are they in the are they in the shadows? They, well, no, they haven't revealed them. They haven't revealed they're themselves to the Jedi's. They are. Yeah, they're, so they're, they're, they're about, the but they're not. So this is all about their work to get into a position of power where they do to reveal themselves. So that is, you know, this is where you get an opportunity to see what they've been doing in the shadows. I mean, yeah, but we don't know that. We don't know that, though. Yeah, but no, we don't, which is why you have a series to <laughs> yeah, that's, that's explain what, what it is. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, I see. Sorry. <laughs> I was getting confused there. Sorry. You're getting confused. I okay. knew nothing about the Acolyte before this thing. I've listened to both of you. I now know less about it. Than I <laughs> that's, that's the best I'm, way to go. That's I heard something about fucking Triffids or something. I'm just like, I have no idea. I've gone backwards. There was a rant about the the movie movie. Pirates and Jack Sparrow for a while, and I just kind of glommed <laughs> over. Yeah, well, uh, that's what we're getting now. We're getting Pirates and Star Wars things. If, if it, Pirates and Pirates. Pirates. Says, if, it's, <laughs> if it's the creation of Sith, if, if it's from their point of view, and it's about how they stay in the shadows, it's how, how anything that threatens the secret to come out is quashed, and let's be honest, it's killed or whatever... That that would be a fascinating series, you know, culminating yeah. for it ending with the revelation of the Sith, um, or part way through becoming the revelation of the Sith and turning into something else. I don't know how the timeline works. I haven't. Well, haven't read well, the that, timeline but. works in the Sith haven't been seen before the Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace, when Darth Maul shows up, that's the first sighting of a Sith in over a millennia. Literally, so, so, so we have a young millennia. Well. So. Yeah, 
So before Darth Maul, obviously Palpatine's been lurking around for ages, but he's been keeping himself a secret because he's just a senator. And before one? that, which, before which, that, so we can have Darth Plagueis. So yeah, we can have Darth, Plagueis in this. Yeah, so because we don't know how old Plagueis is, so me, that would be. You know what? If they said that, that would be that would be a pulling point right there. If you it know leads what I mean? up to, if it leads up to Darth Plagueis and and the actual revelation of the Sith, even if you know set a millennia before they were last seen, you know. Um, that would that would be awesome if if they, if they could do something like that. That would be worth watching. I mean, I have faith. I have faith. I know a lot of people lost faith in the Star Wars thing, but I think the Mandalorian has made people forget a lot of sins, and and I think they've got some good ideas. I think it could go the way of the MCU if they do it right and have these little spin-off shows and lots of different things and that work really well. So, yeah, I'm excited. Even though I know fuck all about it, I'm excited because it's Star Wars and and it's TV based, and that seems to be doing well thus far. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm I'm wait and see. I want to see how this High Republic era is because that's when it's set. So you know, first book's out today. I'll check it out on Audible, and uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. I'm hoping I'm hoping it's not as bad as bad as it sounds as I tried to sell it there, because I know very little about it, but. I know everyone's getting angry about it, but I'm like, well, there I hasn't been anything that pissed me off. I'm not angry off. about it. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> what, the monster minds are oh, in yeah. Souls? That's yeah. fucking hilarious. <laughs> and if you did hate episodes um, eight and nine, check out the Creative Control podcast, episode six and seven, where we did Star Wars. Check it out now on YouTube and all your podcasting platforms. Thank you. At uh, any point, point on control. Creative Control, at uh, any point on Creative Control, do someone go, do you know what it needs? It needs plant people. Was yeah. That suggest- was there anyone suggested? Did Neil do a rant about? No, maybe we need to do an episode on plant-based movies. <laughs> plant-based movies. <laughs> I think they're going to be very much gold or shit. But they are literally. They are little shop of horrors, or they're happening. That's what they are. <laughs> gold or shit? You can only choose one. <laughs> you know, I'm so crazy. My, I'm, that's it. Three of us get a podcast. Gold now. or crazy. shit? Gold or shit? <laughs> gold or shit. Joe there. <laughs> Is this gold or is this? <laughs> that could be the rating system. <laughs> that is the rating system. Is the rating system. Is the rating system. film where the plants kill people. Um, they're happening. With Mark Wahlberg. They're happening. They're happening. They're happening. That was a plant-based movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was absolutely well. Well, well, control. If, redo, if, redo the happening. <laughs> well, if 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 Mark Wahlberg is afraid of plants, then the Jedi are fucked. Then. It's <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, so next up, next up, Robert Rodriguez is back. Apparently, Netflix was so impressed with We Can Be Heroes, doing well on Christmas Day amongst like young kids watching watching his well, new had, kids film. They, had they want a sequel. Against, yeah, had Wonder Woman to go up against. It, they want a, they want sequels, and he's willing to give it to him. Dude, man, give me machete free, man. Come on, you made your money. Like, like, just give me machete free. Don't do the kids thing. We get it. We get it. Unless yeah, that is a quick, cheap win for him, though, man. He'll knock that out in like two months. It's he not will. He thing. will. So, but mind so you, he, he's he's been brought on board for Book of Boba. He's joined mm-hmm. Favreau and for Loney for Book of Boba. So and yeah, and that's going to be in development for a little while and stuff yeah. like that. So he'll knock this out in a couple of months. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if Wonder Woman had been released worldwide in terms of streaming platform, mm. it would have done better, you know. But really, unless you got a Disney Plus subscription, then this would have been where you went to. Because not a lot of families can afford Disney Plus, you know, yeah. on top of all their other subscriptions. So you either watch Soul on that day. Um, if you had the means, you would have watched Wonder Woman. Otherwise, you would have watched this as a kid's movie. So uh, I'm not surprised it did really well. Um, of the three, I watched Soul, and then based on what having seen the uh, trailer for this and what you got to say about Wonder Woman, I think I made the right choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, oh, no, yeah, this, I, I, I'm not, I'm not even going to watch this. I'm not going to watch We Are Heroes at all. I have no interest in watching I, I saw the trailer of there and I, and it, and it is, it, it's missed an opportunity to be, because obviously apart from sort of Shark Boy and Lava Girl and what have you, the one thing that it closely mirrors, which was actually really good, and I might get flat for saying this, is it, it reminded me a bit of Sky High in premise and stuff. Oh, and Sky High was yeah, really yeah. good fun. It was enough nods to the adults that it could be a bit of a laugh, and it was just cleverly done. Whereas this is just, I mean, I mean, for a start, it's got, um, uh, oh, for God, these names escape me. The guy who's in every Sam Ra- Raimi film. Um, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell, he plays the coach, so that's already great casting. But 
But um, it's, yeah, Sky Home is brilliant, but this is clearly designed not to aim for adults at all. It's so kiddified based on the things. It just seems silly, and it's a shame. And more Does Pedro it? Pascal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even Pedro Pascal can't. Uh, you know what? He must have on. He's he's better with his helmet on his seats. So it does it, it doesn't surprise me if he filmed this directly after filming his Mandalorian episode. It's like Pedro, I need a dad to come in. <laughs> Do I have to have some sort of face covering? No, no, you can have your face over yeah. the whole time. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. But no. you know what? His episode of Mando that that's probably Rios, what, yeah. That's probably my favourite. It's probably my favourite. Which one did he do? I know he did one of them. I can't remember. He did the Boba reveal. The Boba reveal. The Boba one. Yeah. I mean, there's some great. I mean, I mean, Bryce Dallas Howard's done a few of them, and she's yeah. knocking yeah. past. Yeah. So there's some great directors and people involved, but but yeah, I do, yeah, this doesn't interest me. I I can see why kids got all excited, and as Kevin said, if they didn't have Disney Plus, there was very little things that was going to appeal to him and. So I think between all the new kids and then all the people who are in between kids and our ages who grew up with Lava Girl and Shark Boy, whatever it is, probably watched it for nostalgia's sake, thinking it would remind them of it. So nostalgia's big business at the moment. So Yeah, it really is. Speaking of nostalgia, it looks like Bad Boys for Life has officially been reigned as the box office champion of 2020. Who's up for bad boys for? Well, I mean, <laughs> cinemas did shut down in like it is true. It's yeah, fourth it is, month of the year. It's that, very that is true. true. That but is very just, true, just Ken. But, but it snuck in. But it just snuck bad in boys. January. Bad boys for life. <laughs> it just I was about to say, did they have any other films com- you know competing against it? Could, could no. anyone even have <laughs> no, predicted Bad Boys can be like, this? we beat Tenant, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can actually say yeah. that. We beat Tenant. <laughs> Um, Bad Boys is better than Tenet so yeah I really enjoyed Bad Boys Um, I thought it was great fun Uh, Sasha we saw it together was Richard and Chris with us as well might have been four of us or three of us can't remember but someone saw it with us I can't remember who yeah I think it might have been one or both it was Richard it was Richard it was Richard yeah and uh, no I really enjoyed the hell out of it I just thought it was a lot of fun Um, again you know it got a little bit crazy at certain points but you know the different things with its lead star I didn't think it would do um, yeah, um, I, I, which was oh okay, I went that way with it. Fair don't, yeah. don't go too spoiler because I haven't actually seen it yet. I, I, you enjoy it, You'll and enjoy I enjoyed it. Bad Boys one and two, but I haven't seen them since I was like you know teenage. Yeah, yeah. They came out. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and to be honest, I'd, I'd take another movie from them. Uh, I think they've got good yeah. chemistry. They look like they enjoy themselves when they make these movies. So, uh, um, yeah, bring, give me give me another Bad Boy. I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah. There, there's a um, if you. If you ever do watch it, there's a cameo in it that is just brilliant. Brilliant cameo. I'll definitely watch it. I'm just waiting for it to come out on something like I can watch it. I'm sure it'll be out soon. So I think it's on um, Amazon Prime. I think it's on Amazon Prime at the moment. Oh, is it? If, if Problem is, is I'm going to have to try to find Bad Boys One and Two first to remind myself. I mean, I know the I know the the Don't gist, the- but I think <laughs> it's so long. So, but yeah, it's been a long gap. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's on Sky Movies at the moment. Bad Boys. Okay. Uh, see, that's the one I haven't got. I've got Amazon, Netflix, and Disney Plus. So I used to have Now as well, but I gave up. So yeah, I guess that's right. I'll catch you at some point. Um, right. Um, it's actually, what? what was its what was its final box office? Uh, let's have a look. Bad Boys was ninety five. You know, jeez, Jesus, <laughs> I'm still in school. <laughs> Holy cow, Jesus. Yeah, it was just um, that cool. Um, four hundred twenty-six point five million. Damn, worldwide, it's pretty good. That's good uh, for and January. in the states, in the states, it's two hundred and four million. Okay, okay, that's re- that's really good for a January. Um, mm, yeah. And and probably the last time we will ever see the box office that big again. <laughs> I tell you what, there was probably one executive that was going, no, we should not release in January, just save it for a summer release. And that person <laughs> is now going, thanks, I can God they didn't listen to me because yeah. speak it in in January was the best decision anyone's made. Yeah. At that time when we hadn't heard of COVID, in those days <laughs> when Corona was still a beer and bubbles were still something you had in the bath. Tears <laughs> was something you built on a wedding cake and all this bullshit. So. Yeah, yeah. 
so true. Uh, There's a different yeah, time. But, you know, if you compare that, I mean, John Wick, um, the pre John Wick Chapter Three, that did 171 million domestic in the US, which is big for an R-rated movie. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, there's, there wasn't very many R-rated action movies, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, Bad Boys again, it's like um, it's one of the biggest R-rated action movies ever. So, fair play to him. Once again, I th- I think there's something to be said that, and and it's not going to help us have any new content anytime soon, which is a bit of a crying shame. But there's something for nostalgia. Remakes aren't doing well, but if you kind of continue an old series, so it seems that remakes are frowned upon. We don't seem to like remakes. We don't like reboots too much. But if you do the nostalgia, so like when Ghostbusters comes out, the new one, it'll be brilliant because its continuation of the original sort of thing it's nostalgia for that rather than rebooting yeah, don't, yeah that was the mistake don't don't throw away what you had because what you had was great it, try yeah. and try and infuse it with and that's new, it new- remake and reboots are really are, are losing popularity and, and haven't been great for a while but yeah things that you know sort no, of carry on carry part on the- of the past and that, that nostalgia feel seem to be just be where it's at and i think that's what we're going to see more and more of over the coming years and stuff so yeah i guess that's the way to go um Satch, uh what is next Okay, last topic of the night. Which film are we looking forward to the most for 2021? Um, Ken? Um, it's hard to think because so many movies were supposed to come out this year. Mm. They're coming out next year. Um, well, I know, I know Monster Hunter's right up there for you, mate. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, well in, ter- in terms of my marvel f- you know we haven't had a marvel movie last year so that that's a big thing so i think you know having um black widow that should be the first one uh from a marvel point of view so looking forward to that um and then oof, we got I suppose we've got Matrix 4. That's I'm more intrigued than necessarily looking forward to, per se excited about, but I'm really intrigued to see what they do with it. Um, uh, I think we've got what, is it Spider-Man's end of next year as well. Um, Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. That that really, uh, you know, looks a lot of fun. Um, and they've really given um, license to the director. What's his name? James. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to kind of do what he wants. And you know, he said you can have whatever characters you want, kill off whatever characters you want and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Um, Shang-Chi as well. I know these are all comic book movies at the moment, but that's going to be interesting. I was going to be excited for Godzilla versus Kong, but after the last Godzilla, I'm not that interested. I didn't particularly like the last one, but with the two of them on screen, that could be just a bit of a popcorn thing. Uh, a Quiet Place 2. Uh, really disappointed I haven't got a chance to see that yet so when that comes out definitely looking forward to that James Bond you know that no trailer looks die. sick that that looks really good and you know if that's his song song it looks like a, you could go out in real style um, so yeah The King's Man you know I really enjoy that series so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that um, I think those are probably the main ones that I can think of so so yeah I can have a very short turn because I basically what Kenan said. I yeah, all the MCU stuff. I've been having a bit of an MCU sort of like I've had to go cold turkey and rewatch <laughs> yeah. stuff. And uh, I mean, it's only ten days now till uh, One Division. I get my fix again. But oh, yes, um, but uh, yeah. So any oh, Top Gun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. That one as well. Yeah. The, everything he said. Yeah. Top Gun. Um, yeah, for sure. Again. Again, Top Gun, one of my favourite movies back in the day, loved it. And again, they're doing it right. They're, they're harking back to it. It's going to be moments of, of you know, sort of, uh, of, of of those moments that make you sort of go, oh, yeah, I remember that, I remember that. And they've even got all the homoerotic sort of um, undertones and the uh, sort of semi-naked men playing baseball. <laughs> so, uh, volleyball, you know. So. Uh, oh, we've also got Dune. That was supposed to be out in December. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, that's what, that's what I'm looking. Thanks to, to Warner on. Brothers. Yeah, and uh, West Side Story. That's been coming yes. for a long time. You've literally just listened to everything that I want to fucking watch. Fuck you, Ken. So basically, ev- we all agree everything that Ken has said. 
<laughs> West Side Story. <laughs> Ken, Ken just spoke for all of us, but for me, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think mean, so. Yeah. West Side Story is one of the ones where I I absolutely love musicals and I love Steven Spielberg, but West Side Story has never been one of my favourite ones. I, I, oh, I really? That's... My, yeah, I chat with my sister, who's who's obviously a fan of musicals and a music teacher, and she's going, "Oh, we teach it. We talk about the the." the genius of, of, of the music and, and the composer. And I'm like, it's just never been one of my favorites. It's got some good songs, but I'm intrigued to see what he does of it. And I think it could be very, very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, all the MCU movies, it goes without saying, um, James Bond, again, massive James Bond fans. Oh, Ghostbusters as well. I, I uh, Ghostbusters, which mentioned, yeah. Oh, no. yes. Um, Afterlife, yeah. So I Coming to America? Coming to, yes. Coming to America. Yeah. It's basically, it, it, once again, this whole podcast and my excitement for, for 2021 is just sponsored by the word nostalgia. nostalgia. Literally, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Ven- we've got up. Venom 2. We've got, we've got Venom Carnage, like Venom 2. We've got uh, Morbius as well. I don't know. See, those excite me a little about. less. I just, it depends how well they do them. Venom was good, um, but it's nowhere near an MCU. It's, it's, it's on par with an, a, you know, as one of the weaker or average MCU things, in my opinion. I think Tom Hardy's good in it, and I think it's fun. But I'll be intrigued to see what they do with it. And Morbius could be okay, but we've already seen a uh, uh, what's his face, Leno, screw up one, one sort of a DC sort of thing already, or one car- comic book thing. So hopefully he does better with this. But yeah. and if they can get completed, we're supposed to have Mission Impossible Seven. Yeah. Now, the mission puzzle. I normally, by the time you get to seven, it's normally just like flogging a dead horse. But they were going from strength, strength to strength. strength. Mission Impossible One is my least favorite of the what? whole series, and then they've got better and better. The second one is Do, the worst. Second Do Grace, one. Do Grace Scott could have been Wolverine. So small, small <laughs> things. You know, we we did all right. He, yeah. he wasn't the best, but. It was. Still, I still quite liked it more than one. I think. Greg, really? You're, Greg, you're, you're nuts. <laughs> Greg, you're nuts. Mission, Mission Impossible is the first one. It's it's basically the TV series done in film form. Fine. I but, didn't appreciate it when I was younger, though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. When appreciate it's, it's it's very hard to follow in terms of yeah. the structure, but it's yeah, still. When I was younger, film. I didn't really get it much out of it, but going back and watching it later. It's good film, Greg. Really you're wrong. Oh no, I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm okay. just saying it's. I, I love it. I'm not saying oh, it's, it's bad. I'm oh, okay, saying it's okay. really good. But I it's think the they've got the strength depth and stuff like right, right. Fallout and Ghost Protocol and these ones are absolutely amazing. I think Tom Cruise is just up in himself. He will. He will die doing the. <laughs> yeah. Hot stuff. He will die doing the. Mission <laughs> he broke his yeah. foot and carried on running on it. The guy is fucking fearless. Call him yeah. Batty with the Scientology shit. The guy is. Absolutely did you see? Did you see him on top of the uh, building in Dubai? Yeah. He just sat on top of the building. They put him there from a helicopter, like no harness and shit. It's like the guy's mental. He will die. He, they, they. um, (laughs) There's a great anecdote. um, Digressing the orbit, but there's a great anecdote where they were talking about um, Simon Pegg was going to do a scene where they in in one of the Mission Impossible films where they had to drive down some 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 stairs and and do all this spinning and blah 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 and do some crazy crazy stunts. And they went to the stuntman and went. And and they and they and they and some picks says, please tell me, I'm a bit nervous about this. Who's your best car stuntman to do all of this? And he went, Tom Cruise. He's <laughs> the best driver and stunt. He's seriously, he is his own. He's top of the stuntman game as well. The guy is fearless. So, yeah. so yeah, anything Mission Impossible, they, they they haven't put a foot wrong. It's just getting better and better. So as long as it continues in that vein, and they've got a really good core team together, so. As long as it carries We've got more combat as well. I need to see something. I need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need we to haven't see seen anything of that yet. Yeah. Previous uh, Mortal Kombat. Free Guy. Yeah. Free Guy looks fun. Yeah, it did actually. It looked fun. I, 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 again, I need to see more of that as well. Actually, no, Fast and Furious nine, 9, is it? Fast 9. Eight, or is, nine it, is it Fast ten? 9 over the years? Yeah, it's F9, I think, isn't it? See, this, this is how I see Mission Impossible's doing this and sort of Fast 9 is kind of doing this and meeting. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Fast and Furious is following the idea of diminishing returns and, and flogging a dead horse and the Mission Impossible is bizarrely going against the curve and, and just becoming better and better and just awesome. So. Yeah, we've got Uncharted as well. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to Tom Holland. 
I want to see it. I'm I'm yeah. kind of intrigued. I'm I'm like you are with Matrix Four with that. I just I'll, I'll wait till I've seen it. I love Tom Holland. I love the Uncharted series. I love video game, but it's it's I'll wait to see what they do. It might just be a bad Tomb Raider or a Indiana Jones sort of rip off and what have you. So we'll see. Such. What's your what's your list? June, man. June. I can't wait for June. Philippe Delanouve is one of my favorite directors today. Like. Oh. Sh- straight up I'll, I'll tell and you what uh, so, 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 sorry to, uh, to interrupt you he needs to do a better trailer he need, whoever's doing his trailers yeah uh, they, they need they need someone else doing the trailers cause you that, didn't like the June trailer nope okay Unins- fair un- enough uninspiring fair enough it looks fair good enough. you're wrong Joe you're wrong Joe but anyway <laughs> you need the guy who did the redemption trailer by I'm the way I'm arguing with a guy that actually cuts movie trailers for a living so like that's I, I do the motion idea. graphics for them <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't fair enough, them. fair enough. You you work on them more than I do, so, you know, that's probably a bad way to... That, I, that, that I used to. <laughs> before, before. There's, a, there's a few other films I've just seen which haven't got release dates yet, but obviously we've got Black Adam um, with The Rock. Uh, we've also got oh, yeah. another musical, Wicked. Uh, we've got... Uh, Wicked, I think, has been delayed inevitably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's right. Because of Masters stuff. of the Universe, that's, supposed to, that's been hanging around for a long time. So yeah, that's not coming out anytime soon. Yet. Development help. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we also have Blazing Samurai. Oh, that's the one with um, um, Chris Pratt. So this is, uh, this is an animated feature. Oh. So it's inspired by Mel Brooks' classic Western Blazing Saddles. Um, <laughs> and it's got Uh-oh. Samuel Jackson, Michael Sierra, um, George Takai, G- Gabriel Iglesias, Dumon Onsu. Um, don't know what that's about. So, okay, so it's not yeah. the one with Chris Pratt. Where's the one with Chris Pratt? No. He was Cowboy Samurai or something. I can't remember. I, all I know, I mean, Blazing Saddles obviously was a classic, but in, nowadays it just wouldn't. Work. It was it was a classic back in the day, but but didn't they? Um, didn't Adam Sandler and Co. do a piss take of the Magnificent Seven recently with something, and it was considered the worst film of the yeah. year? So bad, like the, the the stupid eight or something, the, something like that. And the, it's like, I mean, Adam Sandler, the, ridic- the ridiculous seven or something. No, ridiculous six. Ridiculous, ridiculous six. six. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Adam Sandler and bad movies go hand in hand. He'll either make really bad things or occasionally make something that's watchable and he's likable. And you go, oh, that's nice, but he can make something. Gold or turd. Yeah, gold or turd. turd. (laughs) Now, there's a man who literally defines gold or turd. And and I literally watch him now, I can tell. I just go, as soon as he started doing his little Nick voice and Hubie Halloween and going, I mean, the fuck about that's a turd. I'm not watching that shit. Hubie Halloween, uh, Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah. But yeah, that's the whole idea. Blazing Saddles wouldn't work now anyway, so it would just be too low brown, silly, and and stuff. And obviously, Gene Wilder was the classic and good at what he did in the time. But there's no one like that now. So mm. yeah, it, it sounds like it's gonna be another stupid seven or something like that. So. <laughs> well, good luck. Good luck to that. Um, Satch, was that the end of your list? Yeah, that's the, that's the end of my list, man. June. June. Seriously, June. what um, else? Yeah, June. I think Ken has so, named everything else. <laughs> yeah, Ken named films. everything else. He named all the films ever, like everything. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I'm going to go with June because no one's talking about June, but that's the one I've been looking forward to the minute they announced it. I love the cast. I personally like the trailer. I didn't mind it, but I totally get it. If you know nothing about June, um, you're probably yeah, going to be like, that's, yeah, yeah, you're probably going to be like, whatever. But for someone like me, I'm like, well, I know, I know who that guy's supposed to be i know what that's supposed to be that's sure. fine man so um but for me personally because i'm speaking about myself and not on what other people think i'm i'm all up in i'm all up in that movie man no, i did I say i hate, hate you and i hate well. the trailer that, that's fine <laughs> joe you're allowed to hate the trailer but i'm just saying that that's my movie that i want to see this year it's a movie that I, we- i've never read the book but i like the director he looks like he's got an absolutely stellar cast the the main kid was absolutely brilliant in, in stuff like Chalamet, King, yeah. what have you he was so good so yeah i'm very excited about seeing that so uh, hopefully it gets a theatrical release because i know warner brothers is having a bit of an in um, a fight with Hollywood at the moment, <laughs> um, with the SAG and um, um, oh gosh, who else was representing them? Basically, um, you know, do you know the whole streaming war thing that's going on with Warner Brothers? So Warner Brothers want to put all the 2021 slate online, 
and um, they didn't tell any of the directors um, and now they've got the directors against them and now they've got SAG against them and SAG controls a lot of the directors and actors that can work in the industry and if they turn against Warner Brothers they uh, they they can have no one work for them so um, it's going to be this year's going to be interesting I've got an interesting eye on Warner Brothers this year because um, they fucked up royally at the end of last year um, so hopefully hopefully it will get a theatrical release and it will Denise Villeneuve will get his wish and have it in the theatre um, but um, uh, if it if it is in the theatre uh, I'm definitely that's that's going to be my that's on my list as well if not I'm not bothered um, Satch anything else Any, anyone else is there anyone else anything else that they want to discuss in terms of films coming this year or things they're looking forward to I, I think generally I think if cinemas reopen um, and if you know this new strain and pandemic sorts it out the cinemas reopen I think they are it's going to be all killer no filler I think it's going to be blockbuster after blockbuster but it's, it's the time if you don't already to get an Odin or a cinema card just go live in the cinema um, <laughs> as much as it may be a breeding ground for more pandemic and stuff it's, it's just going to be so many good films they've literally all the ones that are less not necessarily less good but anything that was less important to the studio has been released online i think and has been put on straight on streaming and a lot have been pushed back and pushed back further and pushed back further like bond and black widow and this and that's to to do that so i think we've got such we're, we're bumper to bumper with good films waiting to come out and i think the pandemic really is just sort of making that even more so so yeah I think anything in 2021 is going to be worth seeing within reason because it's just going to be all great stuff when it finally reopens. Mm, yeah, so. I agree with you. Uh, I, I know. Yeah, I, my my Cine World Pass is going to pay for itself and over and over, man. Yeah, yeah. I swear down. That, uh, just in terms of the whatever the first film is that I know what that's exactly what Christopher Nolan was trying to do, which he he just timed it was just timed badly. Um, if 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 he did if he waited to release that film this year tenant this year i think it would have had a better um it, there would have been a better perception of it uh, mm -hmm. I, I, maybe maybe not i don't know but timing bad if, I, was it would it be black widow that will be the first film um the b first big film that's going to be released this year it's may okay. right may 1st Black Widow. I think Black Widow should be for May first. If if so, that would be a, that would be the big test for Disney anyway. I still think they these things might still get pushed back more. Uh, you know, possibly. But I I think uh, in in terms of it's going to be a gradual thing. If I know, when I went to see Tenant, there was um there wasn't many people there, but um it people still wanted that they were still enthused about going even though you had to wear a mask blah 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 I, I think I think in time after people after films more films are released more people more people start to go and they see it's okay that I think there'll be droves of people wanting to just do something other than be at home um, and I know that was that was how I felt <laughs> I don't want to, want to oh my god I'm going somewhere else I'm going to watch a film and um, I was quite excited about it and so in, in that vein I think uh, hopefully I think things will pick and towards the end of where because Top Gun comes at the end of the year and so does June um, that's that would be the apex of what, what you yeah I think everyone will be just rushing to see these films and um, hopefully that there'll be a balance between what goes to stream and what goes to the cinema and um, I, I think yeah I mean Black, Black Widow they, they, yeah you're getting your Disney Plus release and cinema release I think a lot of studios will start to just make the decision we've got to release it regardless whatever countries are open they're open we just got to start getting some of these movies out because they need money coming in you know to, to get everything else moving in their production channels and stuff like that so I think you'll find yeah um, everything from April onwards it will just kind of stick to the release dates um, pretty much as as what they are now i don't see them shifting too much more okay well um with that bombshell i guess we're at the end um uh, ken what is your next episode 
Can. 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 He's frozen. Okay, Ken's frozen. Ken is <laughs> uh, Well, I'll say it for him. Uh, I guess the next episode of Creative Control being next Monday. Well, if you're watching this podcast, it was fr- uh, two months ago. And um, <laughs> um, uh, enjoy, like, subscribe, um, all that jazz. Um, uh, up, up, it's always up in the description, so um, have a look at that. Um, Greg, uh, thanks for coming on and uh, 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 th- that shit in gold I, lo- I really love it <laughs> that, was, that, that was your thing man uh, you, you ran with it I love it, <laughs> I, love I, it. I, I, I love the idea in this day and age just, just cut out the grey it's either a good film or it's a bad film it's either yeah. shit or gold shit or gold Ken are you back no, no he's not back yet um, Satch thanks uh, for um, doing the list and uh, producing the episode um, always always a pleasure Thank you. Okay then. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, this is the. Uh, oh, there you go, Ken. Hey, Ken. Am I back? back? Yeah, you're back. My God, I keep disconnecting. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Check out Creative Control uh, before I, you know, disconnect again. Peace. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, this has been the Zito's Game Podcast, and we're out. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Come on. I am the man that killed Jamie Lannister.